Okay, honey is the nectar from flowers that the bees gather. And again, as they, they, bees actually have two stomachs, one for digestion and one that's kind of like a crop for carrying and transporting nectar or honey. And as with pollen, as we talked about, the bees have beneficial flora in their digestive system. So when they take in that nectar, it's really just sugar water. And the beneficial bacteria will start to actually ferment it to help preserve it initially, just even during the process of carrying it back to the hive. The, the bees uh, will tend to bring up the nectar they gathered and offer it to a house bee who will then take it and often put it in cells or even just leave it a drop on their tip of their tongue or proboscis as it's called to help. Ev the idea is to evaporate off the moisture. And in fact, once it's in the cells, the bees will actually fan with their wings and create a air conditioning system in the hive that blows the air across the combs and helps to evaporate the moisture out of that nectar so that it gets lower and lower moisture content until it gets below 18% typically. And then the bees will cap the cell when it's full of ripe honey, which is below 18% moisture content with a thin layer of wax. As you can see in this picture, the white cappings. And that's like putting a lid on the jar until they need it later on. The, um, the nectar, so that's, that's, that's what honey is. And it's gonna have micronutrients, enzymes, minerals, everything in it. That's different from sugar water which is fed to bees, that the bees will process into a honey, but it's not gonna have the same constituents, the same characteristics. Uh, if, if they get sugar water, for example, which is similar to nectar, but it doesn't have all the enzymes and vitamins and minerals in it. So what the beekeeper will do, uh, and if they're a very uh, uh, conscientious beekeeper, they'll only harvest the excess honey that the bees gather and leave them enough to get for themselves to get through the winter or through the season of dearth when there's no extra flowers in bloom for them to gather that, that nectar. It kind of comes with experience in the North Country here. <clears throat> it's typically anywhere from 60 to 100 pounds. Uh, kind of depends uh, partly on how high, uh, higher elevation, you probably need more than lower elevation. Certain strains of bees tend to eat their food faster than others and consume it faster. So there's, it's, it's pretty variable. The uh, beekeeper needs to remove the cappings, that thin layer of wax from the comb to expose the honey. And then what we'll typically do is put it into an extractor, which is, works like your washing machine. It spins at a high rate of speed and the centrifugal force will force the honey to the outside so it runs down the sides of the extractor and we can collect it below. Honey is, well, I like to refer to it as a first aid kit in a jar. <laughs> it really is. It's pretty amazing stuff. It is also very antimicrobial, antifungal, antibacterial. And with honey, also like with propolis, it works in a multi-pronged fashion. First of all, honey is a super saturated sugar solution, it has a pH that inhibits the growth of stuff. And we've been using sugar and you know, preserves and jams and stuff for a long time. But honey goes much farther than that. Honey is hygroscopic because it's super low moisture content. I remember it below about 18%. And so that means it wants to draw moisture to itself. If you leave a jar of honey open with the lid off, just sitting on the table over the course of a couple weeks, it can draw enough moisture just out of the humidity in the air that it can increase that moisture level above the 18% and then something could potentially grow in it. But below 18%, nothing harmful to humans anyway can grow in honey and that will actually preserve it. Honey is the only food that I'm aware of that in its natural form will last indefinitely as long as it's stored properly. There's actually documentation that there were tomb raiders near the Egyptian pyramids that were going through a tomb and they found this big vase of honey 
Um, well, they knew it was honey after they opened it, and it was full of honey, and they tasted it, and it was perfectly edible, thousand years old. And the story is they were, you know, dipping their fingers in it, and one of them saw a, a hair on their finger, and when they looked in the bottom of this vase, there was a small child that had been preserved after death in this honey, very well preserved, apparently. The clothing and everything was, like, pretty amazing. Um, so honey has, you know, it's a way to preserve meats, for example. So. Propolis, too. I mean, in fact, it, because of its antimicrobial <clears throat> activity, it can be a preservative. The uh, famous violins, uh, Stradivar Stradivarius, I think it is, they, when they studied the finish on the violins, part of the ingredient in, apparently in there was propolis. So it's definitely, you know, and those are, what, 400 years old or whatever, and the wood's really well preserved. Uh, but with honey, so the hygroscopic nature of it, it draws moisture to itself and therefore any bacteria that comes in contact with honey will have its moisture sucked out of it and it dies. It will dehydrate, desiccate and be killed. The other thing honey does is it's, if it's raw, unheated and unfiltered, okay, then it's going to still have the enzymes, active enzymes that the bees placed in that honey when they were producing it. One of those enzymes is glucose oxidase, which as it breaks down on the skin, turns into a number of products, including hydrogen peroxide. So if you have a wound, a cut, a burn, an infection, you put a little honey on there, as it breaks down on the skin, it's slowly releasing small amounts of hydrogen peroxide to help sterilize the area and keep it from being infected. Or if you have an infection, it's just the best thing. Every time I've gotten a scrape or a cut and I haven't really taken good care of it and it starts to turn red, getting infected, I take a little raw honey, put it on there, put a Band-Aid or a gauze over it, go to bed at night. Every time when I wake up in the morning, I pull it off, the red's gone. So every single time I've done that, it's, it's worked. It's amazing. Uh, the stories of surgeons down in the Amazon, in the jungles, they have to cut somebody and sew them all up and they'll slather the wound and, and the surgical area in honey. They have very low incidences of any infections. In fact, when it comes to burns, honey is perhaps the best thing. Uh, most countries will use honey as the primary treatment in the burn clinics, not so much here in the United States, so that's starting to change a little bit. We'll talk about that. But yeah, when it comes to burns, it's, it's first of all, when you put honey on a burn, it will tend to reduce the pain within a minute greatly, basically because you're sealing that wound off from oxygen. Then it will keep the wound area moist, so honey will ha have the effect of helping things to heal faster. And as I said, it will help either get rid of infection if it's there or prevent infection if it has it. And it also not only prevents the foul smell that sometimes can happen and occur in wounded areas, but also reduces scarring, which as you know, especially in the United States, the typical treatment is this silver dyne ointment, I believe, that they put on for burn fi victims, and you often get that discoloration of the skin that can be quite severe. With honey, it's greatly reduced. In some cases, it's eliminated. It's just, it's so superior, it's astounding. And finally, just in recent years, the FDA, Food and Drug Administration here in the United States has actually approved the use of a certain type of honey called Medi Honey, which is all gamma radiated, sterilized and purified, but it's honey and you can use it and they will allow its use now in hospitals for various things. They find it's really effective on wounds that don't heal from other treatments. Venus um, leg ulcers, for example, apparently uh, respond very well to honey treatment and, and will heal up. And other wounds, uh, if, if a patient has a wound and they're treating it and it's just not healing up, they put honey on it and lo and behold, very quickly, it tends to heal up. Honey is just amazing, amazing stuff. And it tastes great. <laughs> and, and, and the price, you know, you, you, what, you pay maybe seven, eight, nine dollars a pound for, for a pound of honey. And, and what it does, it's, it's astounding. And the amount of work that goes into it, it's estimated that about two million blossoms on average have to be visited by bees to gather enough nectar to 
dehydrate it down to make one pound of honey. So that gives you an idea of uh, how amazing, pre amazingly precious and, and all the work that goes into to making honey. Yeah, right, right? Gold. Liquid gold, right? Um, let's see here, what else can I t tell you about honey? Oh, Manuka honey is another one um, that's been studied that has been shown apparently, at least in cer terms of certain ulcers, to have the greatest impact on killing the bacteria that causes the ulcer. And Manuka honey is from Australia. I believe it's from the tree that's related to the tea tree plant. Yeah. So if you're familiar with tea tree oil and the powerful uh, antimicrobial properties of that, it's very likely that some of those oils are getting in that honey, and that may be part of the reason why that honey is, is uh, at least in the research that's been done, uh, proven to be so more, much more effective than many other honeys on certain things. But that doesn't mean other honeys are no good. All honeys are beneficial and have healing potential. But like I said, because uh, honeys are gathered from outside the hive, they're going to have different characteristics, and so some for certain things may be better than others. But all honeys are going to have some healing, as long as that uh, honey has not been heated or filtered. Very important. Heating destroys the enzymes, will destroy the glucose oxidase in the honey, and filtering, when you filter out the bits of propolis and pollen, you lose a lot of the medicinal and nutritional properties. You had second degree burns and you treated them with honey and no scars. Wow, that's, did, did you go to the hospital or did you do that yourself? You did it yourself and you knew, good for you. And there's no scarring at all. How long ago was it that it occur? About three weeks ago. So it healed up that fast, wow. And no, no infection, good for you, that's wonderful. and the staph infection you treated with Manuka honey and that's cleared right up. Good for you, congratulations. Honey is also really good for coughs and throat infections. In fact, some research that was done with children found that honey was more effective than the over-counter remedies that they sell for kids when they have a cough. And again, it tastes, tastes better and it tends to also be less expensive as well. Um, we talked about it for uh, ulcer, uh, ulcer treatments, burns, wound healing in general. It can also, it, because it's a, 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 a monosaccharide, it's, honey is composed of primarily simple sugars, glucose and fructose, whereas sucrose is a disaccharide and is more complex, has to be broken down. So because the bees break down the sucrose that's in the nectar when they produce the honey, it gets absorbed differently and utilized and metabolized by the body differently and it gives you a more even kind of, you don't get that sugar spike like that often happens when you eat sugar, you kind of get a buzz of energy and then a crash. With honey it's a steadier and you don't get such a spike and so for that reason athletes find that they very often can utilize honey to have a good, you know, steady energy without having that that crash or the down the downside that comes from sugar alone. Also, by the same token, diabetics have been found find often that they can handle small amounts of honey much better than they can handle small amounts of sugar. For the same reason, uh, honey has been known to help people with uh, sleep, and for people who have insomnia, it could be helpful big spoonful of honey before going to bed. In fact, some people seem to th also, uh, well, there's a book out there called The, the honey Hibernation Diet. I don't know if you're familiar with it, um, but apparently, I haven't read it yet, so I don't know. I mean, it sounds almost too good to be true, but they claim that taking a big tablespoon of honey every night before you go to bed will cause you to lose weight. <laughs> Everyone's dream, right? So I don't know. Um, but that is a potential possibility because I guess how it's metabolized in the bud and the body and uh, by, the, by the liver and all. Um, it's uh, pretty amazing stuff. Mm -hmm.